Hi, welcome. Welcome friends from YouTube. Welcome to live concert from my living room. Uh, every Friday, six o'clock Eastern time, um, I do this live performance uh, on YouTube and also as well as Facebook. So I'm going to say hi to my friends on Facebook at this moment. And I hope you all are doing well. Very excited about today's concert. Welcome folks from Facebook uh, every Friday at six o'clock Eastern time from my living room. I have this concert series, Songs Without Words is today's um, theme. And actually it's the last uh, installment of this uh, series because next week is a new month. So a new series will be uh, up and coming. So, well, today I have a different setup. Uh, let me know, please, on the comment section, how you feel about this setup for the mic and uh, the view. <laughs> Yes, I am feeling that things are sliding off the stand. So let me just secure before it falls the slide even more. Yes, today's series is all about songs without words. Um, pieces that were maybe written for singers. Maybe it was uh, set to poems and um, all simply written for instru instruments, but have this lyrical expressive elements to it. Now, the first piece that I have selected for today's, hi, hi, welcome, uh, for today's concert is by a Czech composer, Antonin Borchak. I seem to go back to his work a lot. Yes, the more you discover about one um, composer, you will start to discover many more of his works and uh, Pozhark um, has a very unique flavor in his work. This particular piece is taken from his opera, probably his only opera, uh, an aria called Rosoka, Song to the Moon. Um, and here is a version of the orchestra. Um, so I hope you like it. Um, it was actually set to a poem at the time Drosha was writing this, uh, having this idea to write a, an opera, he needed a librettist uh, to work with him. And at the same time, this librettist also was looking for a composer to set music to his poem. So what a perfect match. So here we have Song to the Moon.
to capture this operatic uh, vibe on the instrument. And I'm definitely not the first one to perform this piece on the violin. Actually, quite a few violinists have transcribed this work for um, violin and piano, violin and the orchestra. And the interesting thing was Dvorak himself was a viola player. And I think he also played the uh, oboe, this particular um, aria from his opera reminds me a lot of his uh, New World Symphony where the second movement, the slow movement uh, was um, a, there was a big passage of oboe uh, solo that sort of resemble this particular piece that talked about the moon also. Um, oh, wow, yes. Um, it was translated to German 
in fact, uh, it was first written in Czech and then uh, translated into German. Um, yes, so I uh, had to look up the translation as well to understand the, the song. But yes, it is a lovely, lovely song. Um, again, it's uh, uh, not hard to see why Dvo Shark becomes one of my favorites. Um, <laughs> not only because he was a string player. Here is another piece by a Hungarian composer. In fact, I just found out he was a Hungarian. List, Franz List. Um, interestingly, this is an art song that he uh, wrote a title in French. So, took a little bit of extra research to find out that uh, composer himself did not write the lyrics, of course. It was based on a poem, a French poem, and he gathered um, these poems and um, into these sets of uh, Liberstrom, um, Song of Love. And this particular one out of the set, I'm going to uh, give my best uh, try to pronounce the title in French. And I actually got a little bit of tutor, tutoring from a friend of mine who speak fluently. <laughs> All right, so, au can je I'm not going to repeat it, but I hope you heard it. <laughs> yes, it is an art song, a very, very beautiful piece. And um, here, by the way, um, the lyrics, the poem, um, the essence of it is about dreams, <laughs> dreaming, dreams. <laughs> so that's what it's about.
Thank you very much. That was a very tender, soft piece. Um, originally written for soprano. Uh, in fact, as I was researching on this particular piece, I also found uh, many different keys again. Uh, it was transposed for a different, I guess, voice range. And uh, as I was learning this piece, I almost feel like I had to be a diva <laughs> to, to, to get the gist of this um, with the strong. All right, so it was a very pleasant uh, experience. Not stable, right? Uh, I just have to keep going because there's no way for me to fix it. But how is the um, backing track? Is it loud enough? If someone can just type in the comment section and help me see. Um, because today I have try a new setting to just to give um, a different, um, yeah, uh, if it's not uh, stable, I have to apologize because I was on it for a long time today. <laughs> so could have been the timing, um, usually around this time, or especially on Friday is when the internet goes a little Yes, probably everybody got off from work and from school and everybody's on uh, the computer. But um, let's try another work from, from uh, Gabriel Faure, his versus, which means lullaby. Um, and just accidentally. Uh, okay, here, all right. Oh, wait, actually, no, sorry. Before we have the pursues, is another French piece by Gabriel Faure, a composer during the Romantic era. Here's my second attempt in pronouncing French. Uh, this is the title, Après un rêve, After a Dream. See, French composer loved to write about dreams, this dreamlike effect, either the moon, the dream, after the dream. And uh, again, many different uh, transcription or keys that it was set in. And as I was doing a little research, I think I picked this one for, uh, which originally was for soprano, for the voice. And again, this piece was performed in many different version and um, every, vo every voice, the flute, violin, cello, everybody plays it. So hope you enjoy it. Thank you. 
wasn't too loud. It was After the Dream by Foray. And uh, yes, uh, let me know if balance and everything is so good. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, so many violinists have played this piece. Uh, therefore, there are so many different transcription and um, Misha Elman, who was also a legendary Violinist had uh, also did a transcription of this particular piece all on the G string. So maybe I will try that one. Uh, I have the music with me. In fact, that was the that was the sort of template for for me to try to uh, begin to research on this uh, piece. Now another piece by Foray is his Bursus, Opus Sixteen. Um, this is a piece that I have performed many times. Also, um, it is released on most streaming platforms. So if, uh, yeah, so a lot of my work is on Spotify, Amazon. So please check them out if you are enjoying tonight's concert so far. And um, so here's a little bye by Gabrielle Horan. Thank you. 
much. That was Gabrielle Fauré versus of the 16th. It was um, also named the Salon Music simply because during the time when uh, Gabriel Fauré was struggling with um, his career, um, these salon places open up uh, where people would socialize, hang out, listen to the latest and uh, artists and musicians, poets, philosophers and all that will go to these places called salon and introduce the new ideas, introduce their poems, music, artworks and uh, self-promote to the public. So that was when um, this particular piece, Versus, uh, had helped Foray to uh, jumpstart his career after a 16 year struggle. So, um, yes, this piece is also on my uh, streaming platform. So if you use Spotify or Amazon, please uh, enjoy this piece. You can look up Sharon Young Violin and you should be able to see the rest of uh, my works. I have uh, quite a number of recordings released uh, the past months or so, actually. Yeah. Uh, yes, I just saw the comments on Facebook while I started to play and sorry about that. Yes. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, the best thing is, yes, I do love to look at new works or new pieces. I mean, maybe it's not new, but it's new for me. Uh, if you could kindly either DM, DM me, uh, include the composer's name and the song title. So I see that is the Blossom Plume song. But, you know, the interesting thing is in music, um, especially when the piece is uh, for a singer, written originally for a singer, a lot of the title, song titles, um, are very similar or um, maybe even the same. If you look up dream uh, or, you know, anything related to flowers, water, uh, <laughs> any of those, or love, you would see uh, there are a lot of identical um, song titles. So uh, yes, that is why the composer's name is the first thing I look at and then the song and I will look them up. Yes, definitely. Yes, so please um, kindly forward that to DM me or message me. Um, that way I can accurately search for the piece. Yes, a lot of these art songs um, might not be my new, new discovery, but um, probably it was the first time I performed on the violin um, with these songs. Uh, since I am at this project, Songs Without Words, so I try to find out as much as I can possibly do within a month. Um, yes, thank you very much for joining everybody. Um, best way to experience virtual concert or performances is if you can connect to a better quality um, speakers um, or those noise reduction headphones. Uh, really does make a huge difference. Um, usually the um, built-in mics and, um, you know, speakers of your device or the computer are not very, very good quality. So hope that will help. Um, yeah, we got some French pieces and now let's get to... Uh, ah. I have so many uh, pieces that I have wanted uh, to learn and uh, becomes a little unrealistic <laughs> finding out that uh, we all have limited time. So uh, I have a choice of learning a bunch of new pieces and maybe not be able to really bring it to um, a good level of playing or I have the choice to actually work on some of the ones that I already know and make them even better. So I chose the letter for now. Um, so we have, sorry. Okay, we have Finiaski, a Polish composer, also um, a legendary violinist 
had written this piece, um, actually written for himself initially to be performed uh, for his very, very special audience, his future in-laws. Yep. <laughs> yeah, so at the time when he uh, was in love with this girl, uh, her name is Isabella Hampton, but her parents opposed so I guess uh, um, Finiavsky wrote this piece, Legend, to impress the parents, the girl's parents, upon listening to the final product, had agreed for them to, well, for, for Henrik Finiavsky to marry uh, their daughter. So now we have this piece, Legend, by Finiavsky.
Legend. Um, yeah, well, it was a very, very engaging piece, very dramatic, almost theatrical. Even the title, Legend, tells you this is not something uh, light. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, just like Vinyavsky's other works, also not. Uh, light and simple, <laughs> very virtuosic most of the time because he definitely loved to challenge himself and he was one of the leading violinists uh, at his time to be writing his own music, uh, touring, performing his own works and in fact uh, was so well received that other uh, of his, you know, other uh, violinists during his contemporary also um, sort of copy him, <laughs> uh, do similar things. Yes, yeah, so we have been able to enjoy a lot of um, virtual soul violinists during the 20th century because of that. So, uh, so Paganini certainly was uh, also one of the leading ones, and um, Franz Liszt during that time. Um, I think musicians around that time have. Uh, a lot of creativity and they're not afraid to try new things. For example, writing their own cadenzas, performing while improvising. Uh, they were certainly very, very proficient and didn't sound like they are just testing things out. They were really, really good. Yeah. Um, oh, here is a question uh, that I thought I would like to answer, which is your favorite piece? Yeah. Um, thank you. Um, Hi, Barbara. Um, I, I want to say every piece that I have to perform, that I choose to be on the program, are my favorite pieces. Um, I don't tend to have only one favorite piece simply because I think every composer is influenced by somebody else. Uh, every music every piece of music is also being influenced by something else or somebody else, whether their inspiration comes from nature, uh, their spirituality, or another composer uh, living before them or, or lived before them or during their time. Uh, so many cases. Um, 
I don't think these composers also work alone, even though they tend to be kind of social distance, <laughs> socially distanced, but uh, they're very much um, influenced by one another. Yeah, so um, I think, uh, I mean, that's certainly a reason why I uh, put these pieces into tonight's program, just as uh, every month I have a theme on the series, uh, like concert from my living room. However, the series for this month is um, songs without words. That's right. So uh, that gives me um, something to focus on rather than looking everywhere for all different pieces Then it will be very hard for me to focus. Um, but the title uh, helped me to sort of isolate pieces and think, oh, hey, within this range, sort of this genre, this species of music, like art songs or, um, you know, uh, music that ties to the theme. Um, it just helped me to focus. And so I can actually be practicing <laughs> instead of just daydreaming. <laughs> uh, like uh, before, I um, when I first started this, live uh, concert series. Uh, the first um, series was actually from Bach to Tango. Um, those were the songs that I had performed uh, so many, many times, uh, almost like, um, you know, almost like it, it became a second nature. But um, when I select particular pieces to, to fit into that concert, uh, program, it helps me to actually bring the quality up as well. Yeah, and to explore many more uh, pieces of music during that um, time period. So uh, today is actually the last installment of Songs Without Words because it's the last Friday of the month. Yes. So next week is a new month of November. The title of the series uh let me announce it now i meant to have a post but uh yeah uh something very 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 uh, close to me and very exciting that it's going to be uh tributes to the past violinist tributes to the past violinist something like that so it has something to do with all the violinists that has contributed to the world of violin playing. Uh, that also include um, violinists who were uh, great teachers, method books, <laughs> etudes, <laughs> um, that has a lot of influence on uh, violin music, especially the 20 and 21st century violin music. Yes, so all that you will, uh, as many as I can fit in. Um, one last piece, maybe. Yeah. Um, this piece by Manuel de Falla, Spanish composer, during um, around the time of the war, 1914, was when he actually wrote this piece, um, seven popular Spanish songs. Um, he wrote this set of songs based on poem that talks about love, betrayal, and loss, you know. Um, later, he himself actually transcribed um, the set to violin and piano. So that was pretty original that uh, it was from the composer and he took out one movement. So now we have six out of the whole set of sweet popular Espanol. Uh, I am going to perform the last one, which is a Jota. Uh, every of the dance song was, um, he, he was inspired by a region in, in Spain and Defy himself was born in the region of Andalusia, so he was very familiar with uh, the heart of flamenco music. Um, so here you will hear a lot of these resemblance of flamenco guitar, the the strumming, the you know the uh, and the castanets. So a lot of triplets. Uh, all right, so let's get to it.
Manuel de Fire's Volta from his sweet, popular Espanol that really brings us very close to the Mediterranean Sea. <laughs> you can almost feel the breeze. Now, um, yes, yeah, so like I mentioned earlier, next week we're starting a new installment, Tribute to the Past Violinists. And uh, every Friday, 6 o'clock Eastern Time on YouTube as well as Facebook simultaneously, I will be doing this live stream concert. Uh, please uh, feel free and enjoy uh, the um, sharing this concert with uh, your friends. Invite them along. If you didn't have a chance to subscribe to my YouTube channel, please do so. Click subscribe, the little bell, so every time I go on live or when I have new posts, um, you'll be notified. And also uh, every Wednesday, seven o'clock Eastern time, on my Instagram, I also have this 
uh, live concert series. And um, yes, and if you have a chance, please check out Bandcamp, uh, which I have one of my latest EP, which is a small album, um, Solidia Moore, Bach Air on G String, and Pagabell Cannon. Uh, these three pieces are on the uh, album, and it's SharonYoungViolin.Bandcamp.com. And you can um, enjoy those as well. And yes, I think that's all. Thank you so much for um, joining me for this evening and hope you enjoy the rest of your evening and this weekend ahead. I will see you next week. Goodbye.